Not to speak badly about the legend Dame Judi Dench, but she was in Cats last year, and now she's in this movie this year. Is her presence in fantasy films some type of bad omen? So Artemis Fowl is a movie that just recently came out on Disney Plus and it's been directed by Kenneth Branagh who actually did the first Thor movie. And a lot of people really talk down about that movie but honestly I like the first Thor movie. I didn't like Thor The Dark World but Avengers Endgame actually made me appreciate that movie a little bit more. But anyway, so I digress. So the movie was originally supposed to come out in theaters in May of this year but no surprise the movie ended up being canceled because as you guys know The Umbrella Corporation has released the C-Virus around the world trying to take over the world. Somebody please call Chris Redfield. No, not that Chris Redfield. This Chris Redfield. Hey. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, so... Disney was like, hey, we have this whole streaming service that doesn't really have any new content on it right now because basically our production on all our new shows had to get canceled due to the C-Virus. Why don't we release Artemis Fowl on Disney Plus? Artemis Fowl is a movie based on a, I'm assuming it's a popular book series of the same name, and the movie tells the tale of Artemis Fowl Jr. is a 12-year-old genius and descendant of a long line of criminal masterminds. He soon finds himself in an epic battle against a race of powerful underground fairies who may be behind his father's disappearance. And yeah, what can I say about this movie? Like, this movie was a movie. And can we go back to sexy pictures of Chris Redfield, please? Like, this movie was just god awful. I found absolutely nothing redeeming about this movie. And that's pretty sad because it had actors like Colin Farrell, who is a phenomenal actor, legend, Dame Judi Dench, and Josh Gad, who I really liked as Olaf in the Frozen movies. And even though I didn't see it live on Broadway, I have the soundtrack to the Book of Mormon, and I've listened to the whole thing on numerous occasions, and I really liked Josh Gad and his character in Book of Mormon, and that's actually how I first found out about him. And while I loved him in Book of Mormon, in this, not at all. Like, I think I pretty much knew what I was getting into with this movie, where Josh Gad was doing this terrible vocal performance for his character, and in just the cheesy way the movie opened, and I'm laying in my bed watching this like, is this for real? Is this some type of parody? Like, what is going, oh, wait, the movie's still going, low. Oh, this is good, oh, we're still going, this is for real. Oh boy. And considering this is a Disney movie and all the resources and money that Disney has, and especially after getting characters like Caesar from the Planet of the Apes movie, and I know he's not a Disney character, but Thanos from Infinity War and Endgame, I feel like there is no excuse for a movie to have bad CGI. And the CGI for this movie was god awful. Like, oh my god. And not only was it awful, but they relied way too much on the CGI for this movie. Like, like, they could have used practical effects. Like, for example, this movie is all about dealing with the fairy world, and so there were goblins in this movie, and instead of the goblins being people in makeup, like you've seen plenty of times in plenty of other movies and television shows, they decided to make the goblins CGI, and it just looked awful. There's a television show on Amazon Prime called Carnival Row, which I reviewed. You can click the link for that up here, and that also dealt with the fairy world, and the special effects for that show was way better than the effects for this movie which is pretty sad because I'm pretty sure Artemis Fowl had a way bigger budget than Carnival Row. And I get it Artemis Fowl is a 12 year old kid and this is a Disney movie so this movie is made for kids. But guess what? The 1992 version of The Little Mermaid was also made for kids and that movie had way more stakes than this movie. The Lion King and I'm not talking about the most recent one but the 1994 animated Lion King had more stakes than this movie. Hell the Page Master which is a movie I feel like doesn't get enough credit in terms of great animated movies, but that movie had more stakes than this movie. This movie was just bad, and I felt like everything came so easy 
for the main characters. And I just felt like considering the stakes for this movie and the resolution for this movie, this movie could have really been a half an hour. And this movie was just so bad and considering it was based off a book, I was just like, there is no way that the book was this bad. In my research and discovering the plot of the book, I ended up coming across something else that made me even more pissed off regarding this movie. So in Artemis Fowl, both in the book and in the movie, there is this character named Dom Butler. He is the family's bodyguard and butler. He is played by Nanzo Anozi. And there's another character in this movie who's basically an elven cop. Her name is Holly Short, and she's played by Laura McDonald. Well, in the book, Holly was described as having brown skin, and Dom was described as being half Japanese, half Russian. And not only that, he was said to be so physically imposing that he would have a strong, terrifying presence. So I'm like, so A, not only did you take an opportunity for the main elven girl to be a black or any type of brown skin character and made her into a white woman, but then B, you took the character of Dom and basically made him into a stereotype by casting him as a black man. And so now you got the stereotype of black people being butlers to white families. But then you also added the additional stereotype of him having this strong, terrifying presence. So now you basically just cast the scary black man. So now not only did you take a role from a black woman potentially, and then you also potentially took a role away from an Asian man. Yeah, no, fuck this movie. This movie is a straight up flop. I'm glad I didn't go to the theaters for this movie, I would have been mad as hell if I actually used one of my AMC A-list passes for this crap. I mean, if you have Disney Plus and you're looking for something to do to pass the time, maybe you'll watch it. I'd recommend you watch something else. There's a whole list of things to watch on Disney Plus or Amazon or Hulu or Netflix. Like, don't waste your time with this movie. But have any of you guys actually read the book of Artemis Fowl? Would you recommend the book? And have you seen the movie? Maybe, I don't know, there's people out there that have a different opinion and actually love this movie. What would you say are the main your differences between the book and the movie let me know down in the comment section below also if you can hit that thumbs up button and like this video to really help out the channel and if this is your first time watching one of my videos please check out the other videos on my channel and if you like what you see please subscribe for more and hit that bell notification button so you're alerted every single time i post a new video and tell your friends families and neighbors about my channel to help me continue to grow and as always i'll catch you guys next time Justice for Breonna Taylor, Black Lives Matter, Black Women's Lives Matter, Black Queer Lives Matter, Black Trans Lives Matter, all Black Lives Matter.